When COVID hit, my local Age of Sigmar scene crumbled and hasn't really recovered. Because of that, I haven't really been playing many miniature war games, and because of that, I haven't really been painting for the purpose of gaming. But I like playing games, so I'm gonna quit being a mopey little bitch about it and start out by painting a squad for a game I've been hearing a lot of good things about. Kill Team. Painting models just for the sake of painting is wonderful. I love it. But one unique aspect to our hobby is the fact that we get to take the tiny works of art we create and use them in a game. For me, having a healthy balance of painting just for the love of painting as well as painting for the sake of gaming is a great balance to strike. Even if I get sick of one, it means I can swap over to the other for a while. Meanwhile, my skills as a painter are constantly improving just because I'm tinkering around. But for the last couple of years, I haven't been gaming much. And because I haven't been gaming much, I haven't been excited about painting for gaming. As you may have noticed with my lack of videos about painting an army any time in the recent past. I decided to ease my way back in by painting a full squad for a skirmish game. There's quite a few that have caught my eye, but quite a few of my friends have gotten into Kill Team lately, and they've got great things to say. Plus, GW sent me a Warhammer Heroes box, and that makes a full Kill Team and includes the rules used for them in the game. So I guess it was just meant to be. Now, because I only have to paint seven models to comprise a full kill team, actually, it might only be six models. The rules are confusing, and I don't know if I get six or seven. So if you know, let me know down in the comments below. I'm not just going to paint these seven models as fast as I possibly can. I want these guys to look as badass as possible while on the table because some of my friends are world-class miniature painters that are playing this game, so I can't have my team looking like a bunch of scrubs on the table next to theirs. I also find that I enjoy painting more when I'm not rushing my way through it, and I give myself some time to push certain details up a notch. So I'll give myself three full days to paint these, so I can stay on track and not drag out the project so long that I never actually end up playing the game. But I'm not so rushed for time that I don't like the final product. Now with the rules in the new addition to Kill Team, you can pretty much play any Space Marine chapter you want because they don't have any specific rules based on their chapter, meaning I'm going to paint my squad in the color scheme that I think is coolest. My two favorite colors are obviously black and red, so I thought that maybe Raven Guard or Blood Angels would be cool chapters to pick, but those dudes are all black or all red, which is really kind of boring, and you don't need to spend 15 minutes watching a video where I only paint one color. My buddy Dan let me know that there's a chapter called Blood Ravens, made famous by the Dawn of War video games, and they have a nice combination of black and red, as well as wonderfully cream-colored shoulder pads. Perfect, I'll just assume this was a meme, as Games Workshop literally took the names and color schemes of two very iconic chapters, smushed them together, and hoped no one would notice. I mix up a couple of bottled primer colors until I reach a nice dark rusty red and use that to prime all of the models. While we will be going quite bright with the red, we need to start dark so we have some room to move up and create that drama in color. Next, I take some dark purple and thin it way down and I'm going to shoot the model from below to create some interesting dark shadows that we can use throughout the entire paint job. Because I've created two nice dark colors in the dark red and the dark purple, our entire paint job can just be creating mid-tones and brighter. We're never going to have to go back and spend time painting in shadows. Our last airbrush step is to build up the mid-tones of our red from above. It's best to keep the paint quite thin and work in short bursts over multiple layers to build up the vibrancy. This ensures our transition from dark red to this more vibrant one is smooth and we won't ever have to go back in and blend it later. You may notice in this footage that there's now a large amount of red paint all over my desk and my glove. That's because I somehow got a small clog in my airbrush and when I pushed back on the trigger, it sprouted up like Mount Vesuvius and painted my entire desk red. Oh, and before I forget, if you wanted to pick up any hobby supplies like the ones I'm using in today's video for 5% off an already discounted 10 to 15% of MSRP, check out the website to Michigan Toy Soldier. You can get them anywhere in the country and you support the channel. So thank you for those of you that do that.
All right, time to highlight up this red, and we have a decision to make. We can either push our highlights more towards the orange spectrum or the pink spectrum, because red alone doesn't get bright enough to really pop at the table. I tend to prefer the more orange spectrum for my red highlights just because it's much more vibrant and easier to see, especially at arm's length. But either one works just fine. You just need to be careful in how much of it you're actually applying across the model. As long as you use it sparingly, the material will still read as red instead of orange. What I do is pick an angle that the light is hitting the model and use edge highlights and thin lines across those surfaces that catch the most light directly. By only working up the areas that would actually catch light from your light source, you're gonna save yourself a ton of time because you're not spending that time edge highlighting everything that would just be caught in shadow anyway. And that time really adds up when you're using two or three layers of highlights like I am here. And speaking of edge highlighting, by us building up three layers of highlights, this is going to take us a lot of time. In fact, of my three days, from the very beginning of priming up until finishing this red, it took me a day and a half. But don't worry, that means that the majority of our model will be painted by the time we're done with this step. And because this red armor is so important to how good the overall model ends up looking, we don't wanna skimp in this step. Because I haven't painted anything else on the model other than this red yet, I kind of felt like it was feeling a little bit too orange and maybe you're feeling that as well. But I can certainly fix that later if I need to. I don't want to make any rash decisions and major changes right now until I get more colors on the model and see how it works together with those. Once all the main color of our armor is complete, I need to determine the order in which I want to paint all the other details on the model. And this can be important because I don't want to paint something and then end up having to make mistakes and have to retouch it up later if I can help it. And while this can't be entirely avoided, I find that areas like the shoulder pads are easier to do before all of the trim surrounding them, as that trim is raised and easier to paint while avoiding the round shapes the shoulder pads themselves have. I found the easiest way to accidentally get paint on a section of the model you didn't mean to is by having too much paint on your paintbrush. That's why I always wick off my brush on either the back of my hand, a paper towel, or a little bit of both. It's the easiest way to control where the paint's going because there's much less of it on the brush. Now in the research I've done, Blood Raven Aquilas come in either black, silver, or gold, whichever the artist decided to paint them as, and I'm gonna go with black. I think that if you have less metallics on your model, those metallics tend to pop a little bit more. And if you have a lot of metallics across a lot of your model, they tend to overpower a lot of the other colors and take away attention. I'm also going to base coat all of the guns with black legion contrast paint just because it's fast and I'm getting kind of bored with painting black and there's no reason to waste time by doing two or three base coats over those with thinned down black paint. Today's video was brought to us by Millinote, an amazing tool I've found that helps me stay organized in all sorts of creative projects, including miniature painting. Millinote is a super easy to use software with a ton of templates that helps me stay organized in all sorts of projects, whether personal or professional. It's great because you can keep all your ideas, tasks, notes, images, videos, whatever, all in one creative spot so you can keep on task and keep moving. One thing I really don't like is using software that gets in the way of my creative flow, which is why Millinote really stands out to me. It's super intuitive and I get to focus just on creating my vision, not figuring out how to accomplish something on the software. I use Millinote to plan out my kill team that I'm painting in today's video. And not only did it keep me excited and on track to get these done on time, but it also helped me make really important decisions like accent colors for the eye lenses and even color for the terrain. It's also great that you can easily share your work with fellow painters to get feedback and share what worked for you and what you're struggling on in your latest hobby project. So if you wanna try out a tool that won't get in your way, will take up very little time and it will keep you on track and excited for your next big project, try out the link to Millinote down below for free with no time limit. That's right, for my viewers, you can use the link below and you can get Millinote completely free and you can have it as long as you want because they're that sure you're going to love it.
Once I start working on smaller details around the model, like the leather belts and pouches, I quit just doing base coats over the entire surface. See, we've already started with an interesting reddish rusty shadow color to begin with, and why cover all of that up? If we keep some of it still around, it actually makes the whole model feel like it's going together in the same warm light source that's hitting the armor, or maybe even the reflection of the armor bouncing off onto the leather will leave a little bit of that hint of red, so let's not fight it and waste more time doing 17 base coats over every goddamn surface on this goddamn model. I got seven to paint. And seven doesn't seem like a lot, but by day two, seven seemed like 70. I also find that using a lot of smaller scratchy lines for my highlights and weathering is more interesting and more forgiving than just doing standard edge highlights. You don't have to stress about making sure every edge highlight is the exact same thickness this way. Also, you don't need a tiny, tiny brush to make really tiny, thin lines. You just want to make sure your paint is well thinned with water and maybe adding an additive like a retarder medium to make sure the paint dries a little slower means that the very little paint on the tip of your brush will leave it easily. The key is to just barely graze the surface of the model with the tip of your brush. The paint should flow off in a very thin line. And if it doesn't, your paint is too thick and it's drying on the tip of your brush before you can get that paint tip on the model. Paint tip on the model. Tip of your paintbrush on the model. I follow the same approach over all the other smaller details, never using a full base coat, just slapping some paint around and adding one or two punches of highlights. Because I've got all the red done, I'm constantly referencing where I placed the highlights on that armor to ensure that every other detail of the model is painted with the light coming from the same direction. For the metallics, I do go back to doing an all over base coat. Why? I don't quite remember why I decided to do it that way, but I do have one small tip. Whenever I do my base coat, I add in a bit of matte paint. Usually it's a dark brown or a black. This dulls down our base coat of metallics, takes away a little bit of the shine. This way, when we come back and do our highlights, they really pop. They really stand out because there's a big contrast between the darker base coat and those shiny edge highlights. You'll also notice that I don't put a black or dark brown wash over my metallics. And this is because I started with such a dark version. I could always boost it up in a couple layers of highlights to bring back that shine, but I didn't need to go back with a wash. Here, I just wanted one edge highlight to really punch it up and not make the metallics the focus of our attention on the model because we've got so little of them. Too many details left to go now, and I will say that I have been putting off doing the edge highlighting and all the blacks, mostly because of these guns. They have so many damn edges, it makes me want to dig my eyeballs out with a spoon. I'll admit that 40K has some amazing looking weapons, but goddamn, did they have to put a thousand edges to highlight on every stinking rifle? You can try to dry brush all of these edges if you prefer, but I've been pretty disciplined in not rushing through the details up to this point. I didn't want to half ass it when I was so close close to the finish line. And I found this is an easy way for me to improve as a painter. If I really put in a good amount of effort at the start of the paint job for the model, by the time I get towards the end, I feel like I need to hold myself accountable and not just phone it all in as I'm finishing up the model. This means those details that oftentimes get overlooked, I will finish in a model that I put a little bit of effort in on the front end. Don't get me wrong, the last 25% of a model does not need to look as good as the first 25%. And that's why we begin by painting the important stuff first. Only the captain of our squad here has his bald head exposed, but instead of taking a ton of time painting up this head from a base coat and working up, I'm using that nice warm shadow as a skin tone shadow color. I actually only end up painting about 30% of the head with additional coats, but because I'm using the light angle that I'm using across the whole armor, it really fits in and it shows that that's the part of his face that's really catching the light. I honestly really did not predict that this color would work so great for skin tone shadows. I made a mental note of this and come back and use this in future paint jobs. It almost makes me wish that more of my squad actually had their bare heads exposed.
You know, I should have known better, but I'm an idiot, so I didn't. Contrast paint covers like crap, and it's incredibly splotchy when put over large surfaces, especially flowy ones like these capes. So this looked like crap, and I've got to figure out a way to make this look decent before these models are done. I decided to just faintly build up scratchy highlights like you saw me do with all the leathers with a bunch of little lines, from a dark gray up to a mid-tone gray. I don't want these too bright, so they'll look too much like the metallic or black highlights across the armor, but overall I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. The last step is to base coat all of the bases and do a edge highlight just with some dry brushing. I added some desaturated green to a dark gray for this base color because that green will really look nice and give a nice contrast compared to the red armor of the models. I slapped a little bit of pigment powder on the bases and painted the eye lenses and I'm now the proud father of my very first painted kill team. If I was just gonna paint up this squad for a video for you guys and not for my own use for gaming, I think I would have phoned it in quite a bit more than I did. But I found that I was really enjoying the painting of this squad because I knew these guys were gonna see play at the table for a game I'm excited to learn. And over these three days, I really realized how much I missed painting for gaming. And while I was painting this squad up, I found my mind kind of thinking about what's the War Cry war band I wanted to paint up as I learned to play that game. Or maybe what 40k army should I finally commit to and paint up to completion? Or what was the next board game I wanted to play with friends and I could get started on painting for some of the heroes and enemies for that game? Anyway. Thanks for hanging out today, and I'm looking forward to heading out to the local game store and playing my first games of Kill Team with my Blood Raven squad. I'll even bring it with me to convention, so if you happen to see me at Adepticon, feel free to challenge me to a game of Kill Team. And before we go, a big thank you to all my patrons. It's because of your support we get to keep the studio lights on. I get to keep making fun videos like this one. If you want to join us over there, the links down to the Patreon are in the video description, as well as links to my merch store if you want to pick up a Nin John shirt, as well as links to where you can buy models and hobby gear and paint at a great discount that supports me as well. So thanks to all of you that use those links. I'm going to be back here again next week with another video. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray. Do I have to pee? Because I've created two, woo. Once I begin working on the details like the belt pouches and the what the fucks.